and we've broken the high water record every month this year and even gotten within an inch of the all-time record on Lake Michigan. Storm Team 8 meteorologist Matt Kirkwood is going through the data and looking at why the lake is so high. It's incredible to think in January 2013, we set our all-time record low mark for Lake Michigan and Lake Huron. In just the span of six short years, we went from that low mark all the way to the current records we're setting today. How do we do that? Many contributing factors, but the main one, well, here's an example behind me. Grand Rapids, for instance, had its all-time wettest one year three-year and five-year mark, and the five-year mark almost two feet above average. Now, with all those wet years consecutively, the ground is very saturated, and with all that water, where does it go? Well, it goes right into Lake Michigan and the Great Lakes. The annual average is 38 inches, and you can see just how wet we have been. It's not just here in Michigan, but also in the Wisconsin as well, and Illinois have seen much above average uh, precipitation. Now, with all of that, not a surprise that this graph is going up, 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 and beating the previous benchmark of 1986 consistently since the first of the year, six consecutive months with records. A little bit of good news, though. Let's start with this July, though. We're still Still way up there. We're three inches higher right now with the lake levels than we were last year at the same time. July is two inches higher than its all time record and a remarkable 33 inches above the average, nearly three feet above average. A little bit of good news though. Lake Michigan and Huron Basin, pretty close to average in terms of precipitation, which keep in mind, we've been above average consistently the past several years. And in terms of the entire Great Lakes Basin, running a little bit below average. Now, Storm Team A meteorologist Terry DeBoer, she's gonna talk about to see if this is playing out in a positive trend, to see if we're gonna see any a forecast going down a bit, and also take a look at some remarkable remarkable video right along the lakeshore of how these high water levels have permanently changed the shoreline. Well, thanks, Matt. And you know, you can definitely see the impact. This is from Drone 8, these images side by side, Beach Street in Muskegon, 2015. You can see there was certainly a significant amount of beach. And now in order to try to protect this uh, road, they've actually piled up these huge stones. As you can see how high the water level is. Uh, this was an image taken just this week. West Olive area, Kirk Park, look at the significant erosion. You can see that there was certainly beach there. And now the cliff is, uh, has definitely uh, continued to erode real significantly and collapsed into the water. This is Tunnel Park in Holland and it's interesting when you see the benchmarks here because you can see this looks like just a grassy surface but you can see how much of the beach has eroded and you look at this building here how close it is to the water this is the same building over there so you can just really see how high the water level is and we take you to the Casco Nature Preserve in South Haven this is that road to nowhere you can see that it just sharply drops off as the cliff uh, has definitely uh, the the beach has eroded and that cliff has dropped off into Lake Michigan so some good news finally we actually have had such a sunny summer season so far the month of June the sunniest on record 82.3 percent available sunshine and the first half of July this is through yesterday, July 15th, 77% available sunshine. And since the beginning of June, the 45-day stretch has had 80% available sunshine. This is really significant because we've had unseasonably warm weather for the most part as well. And the combination of that really helps with the evaporation. So not only are we getting less precipitation, we've gotten, been getting less precipitation, we are actually seeing more evaporation going on as well. So those water levels are slowly dropping off. Here's a look at the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook. This takes us through almost the end of July and you can see we continue with the uh, above to much above average temperatures across much of the continental United States, including the Great Lakes region. And here's a look at the 8 to 14 day precipitation outlook, which takes us almost through the end of July as well. And you can see near average precipitation amounts, which would bring us a uh, one week total of almost an inch this time of the year. So at least we're not looking at that super wet weather moving back in. So that's definitely good news. So the projection now, this comes from the Army Corps of Engineers and you can see the projected water levels over the next couple of weeks. Those are projected to go down a couple of inches and over the next several months, you can see how significant the water level is projected to keep dropping off. And that's really important when we look at those water levels, because as we head into the fall season, there can be some significant damage caused by fall storms. 